I heard about uh, the Bhopal campaign back in 1999 when there was a merger, proposed merger between Union Carbide and Dow Chemical. Uh, I was a student at the University of Michigan and uh, survivors from Bhopal had come uh, to uh, oppose this merger. And just like most people in, in, this, uh, in this world, especially people of our generation who were born after the either were very young at the time of the disaster or were born after know nothing about the disaster or or if they know they have just read it in their textbooks and feel that it is all sorted out so when people in 99 had come i was shocked to know about that there were still consequences of the disaster and that is when I first uh, got involved. I heard the survivors speak uh, about how the conditions in Bhopal 17 years later were worse than uh, the day of the disaster. There was a medical disaster unfolding. People didn't know how to get treatment. There was a legal disaster. Years after years, cases had been go uh, going on, and there had not a single person had gone to jail or ha there hadn't been any sentencing. And uh, you know, so that is when I got involved. And interestingly, since I was at uh, business school at University of Michigan, I got a job with Accenture, and my client happened to be Dow Chemical. And this was in 2000. And uh, I decided to, uh, to take that job, and I because just most of my colleagues were very nice people. I just couldn't imagine how could they not believe in human rights and environmental rights and environmental justice for others. And I continued to work uh, for Accenture uh, for two years, hoping that I could bring a change from being in the inside. And I think that was those two years basically made me realize that. Corporations do not have a soul, and they only have one thing, and that is allegiance to their shareholders and bottom line profit. And I saw this in many ways. Bhopal was just one example. I saw this that how the double standards they would follow with employees outside US. Um, and that is, I think, when I decided after working for two years that. Uh, that there could be no change brought from being in the inside, that any change could be brought uh, or had to be with people who were fighting in Bhopal. And even though I had no connection to Bhopal, before that I decided to come to Bhopal and be, um, and be part of the struggle of people who have been fighting um, you know, uh, against corporate crime and for a life of dignity and for justice, and that was in 2003. So could you tell us a little bit about the legal cases that you fought against Union Carbide, Dow DuPont? So, uh, there are many legal cases over the last 32 year history of this uh, 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 of this struggle. So, there is a criminal case that is being against uh, Union Carbide Corporation USA and now Dow Chemical. We have been trying to um, uh, get Dow Chemical to appear in the Bhopal court in the criminal matter. And uh, so we have, we the American government is protecting Dow Chemical and it's not sending them. And we have our government who is really not interested. Uh, you know, so there is, the, there is the criminal case, then there is a case uh, pending on compensation. This is additional compensation that's being sought uh, from Union Carbide and Dow Chemical. Uh, we, uh, we are seeking about $8.1 billion uh, from them, and so is Government of India, but again, that case has been pending uh, for last five years. Then there are cases that we are fighting for a cleanup uh, of the uh, uh, contamination and, and the groundwater, uh, where more than 50,000 people live and whose groundwater has been contaminated due to reckless dumping of union carbide. And there is a case happening there, and uh, very slow. I mean, uh, in terms of cleanup, nothing has happened. In terms of assessment of how far the cleanup, uh, uh, what chemicals, how far are they and how deep are they, we still don't have that assessment. So there is a, a case on uh, cleanup happening, Then there are several cases that have been against the 
governments also where where we are asking for better medical care and uh, proper medical research we had to fight a case uh, just to get clean drinking water in in fact uh, i think uh, dr shiva was part of that um, uh, through re research foundation where we had to fight for almost i think 2012 uh, years so that uh, 50,000 people could get clean drinking water. That case is still continuing, but it's because of that case that people got clean drinking water. So there are several cases, uh, you know, including criminal, civil, env and environmental liabilities of Union Carbide and, and, and Dow Chemical that, that are still been pending in different courts in India. So it's already been over three decades and no justice has been delivered. How long do you think the fight for Bhopal will continue? Will Bhopal ever get justice? We hope that Bhopal gets justice and I think the issue is not just about Bhopal but that slow and silent Bhopal is happening uh, every day in this country and all over the and all over the world as well. So, so right now we have a precedent which is very bad which is corporations can come, kill, pollute, maim and then leave without any kind of liability and then change their names through mergers and acquisitions and then then you are just fighting one corporate whale after another just to get to uh, the, you know, the, the, the company who is responsible. So people in Nepal firmly believe that yes, uh, there will be justice uh, one day and uh, what is most important is that, that you and I are discussing this issue 32 years later is because there has been a relentless fight by people in the city and they have not given up. And whatever little they have got in terms of medical care or compensation or clean water is because of their fight. Because what we have seen over the 32 years is that both government and corporations are in bed with each other, regardless of which party it is. Uh, you know, we have seen uh, how Prime Minister Modi has been whining and dining the CEO of Dow, Andrew Livris, just last, uh, just uh, this year, when the Bhopal court has issued four notices for them to appear in Bhopal court. We have seen how uh, the, the earlier Prime Minister Manmohan Singh doing the same thing, and Dow lobbying basically every top government official that they would be willing to invest in this country on the condition that they're absolved of Bhopal legal liability. So these are the poorest people fighting the wealthiest corporations who believe that yes, there will be justice, who believe that this, prece this precedent that exists needs to be reversed um, and, and uh, so that there are no more Bhopals. My last question to you would be, how do you think things would have fared if Bhopal was in Europe or America? If it was, uh, as he, just uh, if you look at other environmental you know, disasters in other countries, usually happen where poor people or people of color live, uh, you know. And I, I don't, um, uh, it would have been different. I mean, if you look at BP, we see what we have seen is uh, there has been a massive amount of compensation uh, that has been given and it was all wrapped up within a year and there uh, Obama took a very proactive step saying that they would, you know, kick the ass of, of BP. Uh, so yes, things would have been different, but I think it really depends on where where it has happened. If it is if it is happening in areas where poor people and people of color live, they would also meet the same fate. Uh, not so bad as Bhopal, but I think it, it would it would uh, not be much better. But I do I, I do believe that there have been uh, uh, like people in West Virginia who have been fighting against buyer to shut down the MIC production that took that took years and years for them to do it and uh, you know so things are you know so basically corporations I think have realized where, wherever they can get away with murder uh, they, they have they, they have got a trick uh, with this, wherever they can, they do. Whether it is by lobbying with uh, governments, bribing governments, uh, you know, and uh, changing laws in their favors.